thankful to be able to be here today. Uh, thankful for those able to join with us. Asking interest in your prayer. Thankful for the humble prayer that's come before us today by Elder Mooney and grateful for it. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you and you'd like to turn with me, please turn with me over to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Um, what I did have on my mind to preach today throughout the week, uh, uh, I prayed about it last night and it wasn't going to work. And uh, so I do ask an interest in your prayers and uh, I, I did change course on what, where I was going this morning. But uh, starting with chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you. I want us to look at the subject of uh, God's course. God's course. And this, this word here that says a high free course if you go and look up the meaning of that word and how it's broke down, I think that you, it's pretty self-explanatory just hearing the word course. We know what course means. But if you look up the meaning of the word, if you want to go that far, you can look back down through there and it'll go down to a word that I believe that we're all uh, uh, well acquainted with, which is doctrine teachings. You know, the Bible teaches us against false doctrines. The Bible teaches us to hold fast the faith and uh, to preach sound doctrine, to follow after sound doctrine. I've said this many times and many times before. The word doctrine doesn't just mean uh, salvation by grace, election, predestination, so on and so forth. It also uh, goes beyond that. It's the teachings, the whole teachings of the Word of God. And whatever it, uh, you've got to address, uh, whether it be on salvation by grace, whether it be uh, living by faith, whether it be uh, working uh, in this world towards the things of God versus the things of man, whatever it may be, uh, it, it should be unto sound doctrine, sound teaching, the sound teaching of the Word of God. Now notice that in this first verse it says, finally, brethren, pray for us. A preacher can't have too much prayer. We need prayer. We need it all the time. The problem is we don't pray enough. We need to be praying more and more uh, for God's people. I've said this, please pray for me to stand before God's people. It is a hard thing to stand before God's people. It was hard for Moses to stand before the people of God back in the day. It was hard for many to stand before God's people because uh, you're dealing with this old sinful flesh that we have to crucify and put aside and look unto God and seek God's ways and look unto him and rely on him to be able to preach the gospel unto God's people. It says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Let's read on. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience waiting for Christ. Now I want us uh, to look here that that word free course and how it's directing uh, the course in this scripture here and where it's going, you think about a train and the course in which that train goes and takes when it leaves the station. It's got a course, don't it? Yesterday we spent the day in Gainesville with uh, my father-in-law and uh, brother-in-law and got to tour around the uh, old train track and the station in Gainesville and, and got to learn some things about the trains. Uh, here in North Georgia. 
And uh, there were some things that I thought was interesting that he was teaching us and times and experiences that he had uh, riding the train, learning about trains when he was a young man. That one time that the uh, engineer of the train had seen him, or not him, but uh, uh, a man and his boy, and the man says, uh, let's put this penny right here on the rail in front of the train, and as it goes through, it'll smash the penny. You've heard of and seen on television or movies where boys would do that. Um, it's interesting what we see here and and go out in this world and hear about and watch people do doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do. The engineer hollered at the person and uh, told them and scolded them for even doing that, said, don't you dare lay anything on that rail. It could cause the train to derail. It could cause, that penny could cause this train to go off track. The man and his boy was embarrassed, and instead of sticking around and uh, humbling themselves, they ran off away from the crowd. It taught my father-in-law a valuable lesson how important it's not, it is not to have anything crossing those rails, not to have a crack in the rail. Not to have all these things that people think is okay to just put up there, watch it be smashed, not have it there because it could cause a train to be derailed. And as I thought about this, is it not the way it is in the New Testament church that when you give the gospel unto a child of grace, uh, uh, you give the gospel unto them, uh, they don't receive it gladly. When they're wrong, uh, they're embarrassed, and they run away from the truth. They come away out of the church. Uh, but brothers and sisters, I have seen those that humble themselves before the mighty hand of God and thankful for the truth, uh, thankful for what God's blessed them to have. Thankful for the doctors of salvation by grace. Thankful for the practice of the New Testament church. Thankful for it. And, and, and glad and repents of their sins and stays in the church and continues in the word of God. You say, Brother Brad, uh, how many times has somebody offended you uh, and how many times it made you uncomfortable? Uh, um, I'm not talking about somebody that's doing wrong in the church that's not following after God's will or the word of God. I'm talking about somebody that is offended at the word of God rather than divided uh, like scripture teaches. <clears throat> I've given scripture to some people and some people take that scripture and is offended by the scripture and you never see them again. If they're offended at scripture, they're not offended at me, they're offended at God. If they're offended at scripture, they're offended at God, not me. There's a course in which scripture gives us his word. There's a course in which we have to follow through with the word of God and to uh, do things in accordance to the word of God. And that's the course that God gives. And I think it's interesting that when these preachers, uh, when he's asking prayer for the ministry here and um, there in Thessalonians, I think it's interesting that it's mentioned, pray for us, plural, that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified means nothing in the way nothing laid on the track nothing that calls them to derail from doing that which is right because let me tell you the enemy is always going to be nipping at your heels trying to cause problems the enemy puts lies in your head the enemy may cause you to read something wrong the enemy may uh uh, whisper in your ear something that isn't true. It may be that uh, you may be in the house and your own family decides and gets a wild harebrained idea to do something and you go right along with it because you think, well, it's my family. It should be. 
Are you following the course of God? Are you following the word of God in where you're going? Or are you allowing things to cause you to be derailed, to get off course, to get off track? Brothers and sisters, we don't need to get off track, do we? We don't need to get off track. I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I want us to look uh, there in verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. What does it say? The course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that, know, that now worketh in the children of disobedience. There's a course of God's word, and there's a course of this world. There's a course you take when you're a child of grace, uh, that you get and follow after the things of God, or you have the course of this world of disobedience. You're born with that course. You're born in this sinful nature, this wretched nature, in that course. But you're also born again. You have been quickened by the Holy Ghost. You have been quickened, changed, made alive in the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God that is in you and made you a new person. You've been born again. You have been made new spiritually, alive by the work of the Holy Ghost. You have something there that puts you on a different course. On the right course. The course that you were born into, that you inherit from your mother and your father, the sinful course, that just sends you right straight to destruction. But the course that God has for his elect people, they knew before the foundation of the world. That's a course that God does, that he puts you on through, quickening you through the work of the Holy Ghost changing you, electing you, predestinating you unto the adoption of children. That's a course that God does. And there is a course, there is a walk in which we walk in that walk. I want us to look uh, over at Ezra. Ezra chapter 3 verse 11. I jotted this scripture down. I want us to look at this portion of scripture. And they sang uh, together by course and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. Because he is good for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord. Because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. They were worshiping God and thankful that the foundation of the Lord was laid. How often do you see people getting excited of when God's people is building up the house of God and fixing things up and doing things right and trying to make sure the very principles and the foundations within that church is laid just right according to God's word. And I'm not talking about just natural foundations. I'm talking about good spiritual foundation that Jesus Christ is that very rock, that very cornerstone, that very foundation in which we build off of. And let me tell you, oh, when Jesus Christ came into this world uh, and he was that cornerstone and he was that chief cornerstone, the stone that the builders rejected, it's not going to be pretty, it's not going to be attractive according to the uh, ways of the world or the builders of the world. The natural eye is going to be attractive to a, a child of grace. It's going to be just right. It's going to be a cornerstone. It's going to be uh, just right to build off of. When he told, uh, the Lord told Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want you to think about this, that Jesus laid it all. Jesus did it all. Jesus is sound. He's perfect. 
He's righteous in every way, shape, form, or fa and fashion. There's no spot, no speck of sin found in him. He's just right. So I want you to think about this, that when they're talking about rejoicing because the foundation, that was to rejoice and be thankful for what was being laid down to represent of what is to come. We're in the New Testament church now. Jesus Christ has already laid, he has already uh, founded the New Testament church. He's already taken care of the New Testament church. He has, uh, it's on him. He's that foundation. He's that chief cornerstone. He's already set it up. Brothers and sisters, it's our job to be good stewards and keep up with what God has blessed us to have in the New Testament church. He's blessed you with the truth. He's blessed you with the doctrine and the practice of the New Testament church. He's blessed you with his word. He's blessed you to be here already to satisfy uh, that atonement that needed to be made. Uh, he's satisfied that. He's taken care of that. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He's took care of all of that. Brothers and sisters, the word of God is a great course. But the problem is, is that we have so many times things speaking in our ears constantly that is discouraging us, that is getting us off track, that is taking us off course. I want to just go back to the analogy that I gave earlier about the train. There's another thing that if you'll notice and you study trains and the train tracks that there's different switches that causes the train to change course or direction uh, from a place that it may have been headed to and may go an opposite direction and turn around. A lot of times, uh, brothers and sisters, sometimes people can get out there, you've seen it with the old Western movies where they get out there and change the, uh, the direction of the train and, and change the switch. And, and switch the direction to get it going off in a different direction. You remember that? But I want you to think about how it was that when those times came that people would be out there, it was that engineer's job to be on the lookout for that. The engineer wasn't the owner. He was, it was his job to run that engine, to take care of that engine, to uh, maintain that engine, uh, to do what he had to do with driving that train. Now I want you to think that God Almighty has blessed us with the New Testament church. It's the gospel minister's job to keep that thing, uh, the worship service on course. The church doing right on course in this life. It's our job to be responsible it's our job as gospel ministers to be on the lookout, to be watchmen, to be uh, faithful unto the truth, be faithful and know that in the time in which we have so much that is out there that could get us off course and to derail us or to bring us in other directions in other places, it is our job as gospel ministers uh, to be able to stay focused on what is before and where the destination is that we've got to go. In other words, you say, well, it's not the gospel minister's job to get us to heaven. I know that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about here in this life. In your life, are you headed in the right direction on, in the word of God in this life? Are you allowing your friends, your family, your relationships, your job, people doing wrong to get you off course and off course of focusing upon the word of God and what God would have you to do. Which is it? I thought about that uh, more and more uh, <clears throat> last night. 
as I was thinking about this subject and that portion of scripture, and it just dawned on me how often we get off course and we don't stand fast in the word of God. Reminded me of Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you, that ye should not obey the truth. You think about this, stand fast, therefore, and the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. We are not brought unto the bondage of the law as it was back in the day. While it's not that the Old Testament scripture is done away with, it's still good for us to use today. But you've got to understand that Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ came into this world, and he satisfied the law, he kept the law to every jot, to every tittle, and that when he offered himself up upon the cross at Calvary, and when he cried out, it is finished, let me tell you, the Holy Soul, is, that curtain was rent, it was done away with. There was no more separation. Jesus satisfied it. Those things were satisfied. God had done a rich blessing for us through his son, Jesus Christ. And because it was satisfied, brothers and sisters, we had a liberty that those people of the old time didn't have. We're able to enjoy a sweet peace and liberty and freedom that they did not have in the Old Testament church. New Testament, we have liberty, and we've been blessed not to be in such bondage. But yet so many people today love to be in bondage. There's countries out there overseas that they are still in bondage. The Jewish people today that worship uh, like they did back then or try to worship like they did back then are still in bondage. They're in unbelief. But God has blessed us in the New Testament church here in the Primitive Baptist to have the truth and to enjoy it and be thankful for it. Or are we thankful for it? I sent it to everybody a meme or a picture that Trina had found on the internet. And somebody had posted it and said something about some of the people that's overseas that are going to church knowing they may die. I'll cut out the name of the country. Knowing that they may die for meeting and worshiping God while here in America, people meet and go to church if it is convenient, if they have nothing left to do at home or have a party to go to or have a game or if they feel good. I'm not talking about people that really have real reasons that hinder them. I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. The point is that there are some times that people have allowed so much to get them off course and derail them from being able to enjoy the sweet spirit and the worship service and the house of God and to be worshiping in spirit and in truth and enjoy the spiritual food that God has blessed us to be able to receive by hearing the preaching of the gospel. There's a blessing in it. 
but there's a blessing. But notice there in that first seven of Galatians chapter five, ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Who hinders you in your life, brothers and sisters? I'm gonna ask you something. Who hinders you in your walk, in your course, that you have in this life to follow after the things of God? What hinders you from following after the things of God and following after the Lord? What hinders you? I can think of a ton of things that has tried to hinder me in my life. If you can't think of something, Shame on you, because I believe we've all got something that tries to hinder us in this life. That's why the Bible says to crucify the flesh. That teaches us to take up your cross and follow me. To crucify the flesh in this life. What hinders you? I like how Paul had reminded the Galatian church, he did run well, who did hinder you. There was a bunch of people, you remember, there in the Galatians, that Paul had gone in there and he had preached the gospel unto them. He had labored with them. He had worked with them. He had helped them. He had preached the truth unto them. And he had said at different portions of the scriptures in Galatians, who have beguiled you, who have bewitched you, Brothers and sisters, uh, that's pretty strong language, don't you think? Paul says, who hath beguiled you, who hath bewitched you. He understood that there was those that crept in unawares uh, after he had left and came in behind and tried to destroy everything that he had taught them and encouraged them in in the truth. The same way now in the gospel church, you have a sound gospel minister go and preach the gospel unto God's people. And you have somebody come around that may be, uh, that crept in and unawares and come out preach something other than the truth unto them, uh, discourage them to pull them aside, to drag them off, uh, to derail them and get them off course and go the course of man instead of the course of God, brothers and sisters. That's the way it works. Uh, and it happens today. If you don't think it happens today, it happens all the time. And it, it happens in your family. It happens in the church. It happens in your friends. It happens out there today. It has happened to everybody in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But have you stood fast in the things of God? Have you stood fast on the Word of God? Have you stood fast on the doctrine and the practice of the New Testament church in which Jesus Christ is that chief cornerstone? Have you stood fast on that? I hope we do. It's not just the gospel minister to stand fast. It's, it is our responsibility in each and every one of us as members of the New Testament church to stand fast. That's who Paul's talking to. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Let's go back to our, <clears throat> our analogy that I gave you earlier. Could you imagine them going down the railway, <clears throat> uh, going down the tracks, and somebody took that penny just being fun and threw that penny and, and took it there and landed and put it right there on the track. And as that train, as heavy as it is, as many people as it's carrying, um, and they run over that penny and it causes that train to derail. And that young boy uh, ran off out of fear and or maybe he did it. Maybe it killed him. Maybe the train derailed and flipped over on him. Could you imagine? How horrible that would be. But imagine somebody doing that and causing something to derail. Brothers and sisters, that's the way it is in the New Testament church. Uh, when God's people get to a point uh, uh, when uh, people uh, think, well, this is harmless. Uh, this is just uh, minute. Uh, and brings up this or that and says, well, uh, we're just going to lay this out here and see what happens. Brothers and sisters, you could end up derailing the whole train. The Bible teaches, beware of foolish and unlearned questions, for they do gender strife. The problem we've got today 
And sometimes we love to open this mouth, uh, this poisonous tongue, uh, loves to bring forth out things that causes problems, brothers and sisters, and takes us off course. Sometimes we lay those pennies uh, uh, out there on that rail thinking, well, it's kind of fun to see this happen and see what happens to the penny. But that one penny could cause something massive, something worth that's so valuable, something that has priceless people on that train to be derailed and cause an accident. There was a story that I had read Yesterday, as my father-in-law was teaching my son about what happens when a train derails. In London, there was a, a portion, or, or somewhere there was a portion overseas of train track that there was a crack in the rail. And it came down into a bee. It was shaped like a bee. Looked pretty harmless to most person that doesn't know what they're looking for or doesn't understand how things work. Would think, oh, let's go over it real easy. Was about that wide, and <clears throat> the crack on both sides came down to a point right where the bolt held those, that track together. There was bolts in, and it had pieces on each side, and went right into the hole. That train derailed and there was uh, all kinds of uh, calamity. There was a lot of people's lives lost in that train being derailed. Forty something people, a lot of people. Brothers and sisters, I want you to think about the way it is in the New Testament church today that if somebody creeps in unawares, it's Apostle Paul's talking here in Galatians, and start preaching and teaching and getting people off course of the truth. My dear friends, one little thing could cause the whole church to go down the wrong path and go in the wrong direction instead of the right direction according to God's word. Now, I'm not talking about somebody that may have uh, misquoted a verse or uh uh, by accident and you know what he's talking about or someone makes a mistake uh, or something. We're talking about somebody like what they're in Galatians they're dealing with. Somebody that is purposely doing what they're doing to cause problems and chaos and to bring uh, uh, converts over to them. To convert the people and to sway them to get them to go in the wrong direction. Dangerous. But the problem is uh, sometimes in the New Testament church there may be uh, there may be actions like what we're talking about with that little boy putting something on the rail that was not on purpose to bring any harm to anybody. And sometimes we we need to be mindful of ourselves. How you live, how you walk, how you do can encourage and how especially how you talk can encourage one another to continue in the way of the Lord to stay on course and to keep peace and to do that which is right and to strengthen one another and to hold one another up and to encourage one another in the Lord and to continue in the doctrines and practices of the New Testament church. It can encourage, but if we allow a little here and a little there to be laid across the tracks, we could cause such calamity and such problem. We could cause a host of issues. I remember a second Timothy chapter four, verse seven. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I want you to think of what he was thinking about when he penned these words. When he said these things. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith.
at the end of our lives, are we able to look back and say, I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. I fought the good fight. I've enjoyed living in the things of God. I've enjoyed holding fast the truth. As Apostle Paul had stated, have you enjoyed being able to do that? I can't even imagine the thing of <clears throat> the fight that he has had to endure in his life. He's been shipwrecked. He had warned them. They listened not. God spared them when they listened not because of Paul. The things that he had to witness and endure, the beatings, the imprisonments. And yet Jesus Christ had gone through more than the Apostle Paul ever went through for our sakes. Jesus Christ stayed the course and he did it perfectly. He kept the faith, he kept the law to every jot and every tittle. There wasn't anything wavering with our Lord and Savior. Apostle Paul was a man just like you and I. And yet he sang there towards the end of his life, fought the fight, I fought a good fight. Finished his course. I hope and pray the good Lord helps me get to the end of my life that I'm able to say that. Do we ever get to a point in our lives that we think, well, you know, I'm capable because of this old sin nature that I have to crucify. I'm capable of falling short. I'm capable of making bad choices. I'm capable of doing that. But God makes a way. God gives us a choice. He gave Adam and Eve the choice. They chose sin. We have this flesh that we inherited. We have this carnal nature that we deal with. And we have choices. There's consequences for our choices in this life. There's consequences. Mm -hmm. The doctrines of grace is wonderful. It's marvelous. Because we understand it's not based upon our own righteousness that we have eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because of grace. But it doesn't give us the license to go out and do anything and everything we want and how we want, when we want, or to preach anything and everything we want or to preach false doctrine because uh, it feels good or it's well accepted. But we are to stay the course. To stay the course in God's word. Regardless of what we think. <clears throat> but sad to say how many people really want to stay the course. How many people really want to stay the course? While I was studying how the <clears throat> different things work on the railway and thinking about how that could cause accidents, just the smallest of things. Ran across a story and noticed how people in the day and time when they would take a ride on the train from coast to coast and how that there was stops in between and how that there was uh, in different areas, depending on how, which engine they used, if it was steam or whatever, they would have to have towns so far apart so that they could fill up with water and get uh, what they needed to run that train from place to place. But there's also places where they could derail and go sightsee and go to different places if they didn't stay the course. There was consequences at the end 
of that course that they were supposed to run if they had materials that had to get from point A to point B. And if they went anywhere in between other than where they were supposed to go, it didn't get there on time. Brothers and sisters, we hinder people when we don't stay the course. We hinder ourselves. We hinder people when we don't stay the course. When you don't stick with the word of God, thus saith the word of the Lord, you hinder others from following after God's word. You discourage others from following after the things of God and following after yourself, your own desires, your own wants, and what your lust and and, and your flesh desires instead of the things of God. And how sad is that? But we can also, as I preached the other day, the other day when Apostle Peter had denied the Lord three times and uh, the Lord Jesus had warned Peter that he was going to deny him three times, and the Lord Jesus had told him, but I pray for thee that when thou art converted, converted from what? Converted from error unto that which is right. Not that he was uh, not a child of grace, not that he wasn't falling in the way, uh, and then he's gonna be converted to be a child of grace. That's not what it was talking about. But a child of grace that was falling in the way, that goes into error, and he says, but I pray for thee that when thou art converted, go and strengthen thy brethren. God bless you to get back on track. <laughs> Go strengthen your brethren to stay the course. Brothers and sisters, we need to stay the course of what God Almighty has blessed us to have, the truth. Stay the course of the truth. Let us turn back to our opening text there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. May we pray. May we pray that the word of the Lord may have free course. And it has free course not only through the preaching of the gospel, but also in our walk, the following the word of the Lord. Because when we walk in the light that God has given us, we're able to shine forth that great light unto others that they might be able to see our good works and follow after the things of God. And encourage one another in the way of the truth. May we be that way. May we be able to stay the course, God's course, and not the course of man or ourselves and fall into great disobedience for there's great judgment it's spoken about many times throughout Old Testament the judgment of God coming upon the children of Israel and the times in which they brought punishment because of their great disobedience and not following after God but their own flesh and their own desires their own wants and their own will instead of God's will there was great judgment that came upon them. And there was times of great repentance in God bringing a blessing upon them and helping them and strengthening them and them getting back on course. There was times in the New Testament the same way. You see there the Galatian church, they also were getting off course where they did run well. But then there was men that had crept in unawares to try and change that. May we stay focused upon God's word and upon the gospel that the Lord has blessed to be preached by good faithful men and that we stay close unto the things of God. Thank you for your time, your kind, sweet attention. Continue to keep us in your prayers.